This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ginger Stocky. Joyce will be along in just a minute. But do you have a regular habit of spending time with God by studying the Bible? That is great if you do and okay if you don't because we have an exciting challenge for everybody that will help fix that. It will help form or strengthen that daily rhythm of spending time with God in His Word every single day. It's an easy, fun way to do it. It's called the 30-30 Challenge. And you can sign up right now and begin prioritizing, learning how studying the Bible really changes your life. And you're gonna begin like this. We're going to challenge you to take 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Now, that may sound like a lot, but believe me, when you begin doing what you can and with using all these tools that we have for you, before you know it, you'll discover that it's really making a difference in your life. We have online tools that will help you along the way, study guides, downloads, tips from Joyce. She's walking with you through this so you're not alone, and a whole lot more at joycemeyer.org slash 3030 challenge. And we have person after person after person who have told us what an impact this has made in their life. We hope you'll be one of them and you'll join us for that challenge right now. For today and on this show right here, what we're doing, we are sharing part two of our discussion about how to truly forgive. It's coming to you from Joyce's Talk It Out podcast. We had a great discussion with my friends and Joyce about the importance and the how-tos of forgiveness. You see, forgiveness may take some time, but God will be right there with you to help. You are not on your own. And we want to help you learn how to do it too. Take a look. To me, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to choose to do the right thing no matter what somebody else does, we choose to do the right thing. Yeah, that's so good. And like, also with that, like forgiveness, I've just realized it's not forgetting yeah. or excusing the mis, the you know, the bad behavior. And when you say that, like, I know for a fact that this particular season that I've just walked through, I would not have been able to do it without everybody watching this. You and your testimony, you guys, because I did some last week. I don't think I, I don't know if I told no. y'all. I, my ex is getting married, okay? Y'all have been on this little journey with me, right? My ex is getting married, and he's getting married very quickly and soon. And I knew that my daughter was about, well, I found out that they, you know, that my daughter's in the wedding, and they're about to move in together. <laughs> they're about to move in together and all that good stuff. And that was hard. Yeah, but sure I was. knew the right thing to do was to bless them, forgive them, and have a conversation because we're now in this thing together. Even though my daughter's 18, we're still, mm. we're still like, I guess you call it a blended family. I don't know. Like we're now in <laughs> yeah. this, and I, I'm not trying to be anybody's best friend, but I'm saying if my daughter's <laughs> living there, like they're, we're about to be yeah. connected, you know? So yeah. I was just like, it's the right thing to do to speak to, you know, her and him. And so we got a, on a, I requested a call. We had a call. I was like, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself to you guys and or wow. to you and blessings to you all in your marriage. And I really was genuinely good for you. I, <laughs> and this, and you. I, 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 I know it was God, but I know because of your testimony. But I mean, look at how far God's brought you mm -hmm. in the last year. Yeah. To be able to do that. Yeah. And that's exactly the kind of behavior that God is looking for. And it takes spiritual maturity. And you did yourself such a favor in doing that. Yeah. Because you could have lost your relationship with your daughter. Yeah. If yeah. you would have handled it a different way. Yeah. And just been full of bitterness and angry all over again. And it's really God does not tell us to forgive people for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not because they deserve it. It's because we deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure you didn't really oh. look forward to doing that. You no, didn't really I, feel like no, doing it. No, my heart it. was, it was beating. I was nauseous the entire like time before, right. you know, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I thanked her for in, like in, including my daughter in the wedding. Like, and I, as soon as I got off the phone, I kept, I kept the call short, mm -hmm. 
you know, because I could feel myself about to take a little turn. <laughs> I, know, I was like, <laughs> all of a sudden, she's like, okay, gotta, gotta go. go. And so, and let me, t- bye y'all. You know, I had to stop before, before I went too far. But I remember when like, this was just like a week ago now. So I hung up the phone and I remember shaking yeah. like crazy and just, cr- I cried. I couldn't control the emotions. I almost had like, it felt like a little, like a panic attack, but it only lasted for about like five or 10 minutes. I was like, God, you have to help me. Mm-hmm. And then, I took a deep breath after I prayed. I was like, I I let go of it. It's nothing I can do about the situation. This whole journey has felt like a dream. It's felt like this isn't happening to me. Like this, none of this is happening, you know, but in that moment, it still felt like a dream. Nothing really changed. It still still felt hurt. It didn't feel as hard hard as it, as hurtful as it's been feeling, but I felt like a a weight lifted off of me because Mm -hmm. I did it, but I still felt sad. But how good do you feel that you did, that you know in your heart that you did what God would have you do? Amazing. I feel so great. That's the thing. I feel so great about it. And I didn't want to do it, but I I knew that there was the right thing to do. This is no kudos to me because I was like, God, why would you make me do it? Yeah, but so proud of you. So proud of you. you. Thank you, friend. That's awesome. So... That's a good lesson for everybody right there. Yeah. I think there's so much to be learned in doing the hard things. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to have to be in that situation. And like you said, God, maybe that wasn't His master plan for us, but people make choices and there's sin in the world. And we all have to make really hard decisions. Mm -hmm. And for you to learn, for all of us to learn when we do make that decision, that God will be there for us. He's not going to let us down, and He's going to help us. That that mm-hmm. makes such a difference. I, I've really um, talking about trying to be unoffendable. I've spent a lot of time learning that when you get these little um, hurts and nicks and bruises of things that just happen every day, mm-hmm. that the sooner I forgive, yeah. the quicker they heal. Right. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, even the little things, you know, somebody said something or whatever, somebody did something. It, if I don't, they those wounds get deeper, yeah. right. and you replay them in your mind, and they get bigger, maybe than they ever were. Or you share it with somebody else, and together you go, <laughs> and it becomes a, a, mm-hmm. a scar and a really right. deep wound when it was never meant to be that. So, if if I can jump on these things right away and choose to forgive as soon as I can, it's made a huge difference for me. But kind of like you're talking about, I had one situation years ago where just out of the blue, I had, um, I guess what I would call it, a a terrible betrayal from a friend, really, really severe, just blatant lies and totally shocked. And I was so hurt. And when you get something like that out of nowhere— out of nowhere, and you're completely blown away and, and just shocked. I, I think the the hard thing to do is to begin with, okay, I, I need to forgive right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to do it as soon as I can. And while that's true, there there is a little bit of preparation that you kind of have to do for mm-hmm. that wound. You, you got to start to clean it, you mm-hmm. know. You can't just put a Band-Aid on it or it will come back up later. Right. Mm-hmm. And I really learned that through that time that um, – I had a lot of work in my heart to do that was part of that forgiveness process. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a, okay, God, I'm going to forgive, and I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm going to move on, forgive and forget. It it doesn't work that way. It it was God showing me step by step by step, this is what you do first. You know, Mm -hmm. you you make the decision to forgive. Mm -hmm. And then you stop wallowing in it. (laughs) You stop reliving it. You stop thinking, what will I say next time I see that person? Mm -hmm. You know, so many steps that he showed me that really helped me to get through that really deep wound that I'm so grateful for because it's taught me so much for the future. And like you said, I think it did help prepare me for God, for, for what God wanted to do in different areas of my life. One of the first things that God wants us to do that's so helpful is to pray for the people that hurt you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. And it's really hard in the beginning. It is. It gets easier. Yeah. It's, you know. <laughs> oh, it's don't, don't make us feel <laughs> bad. It's, it's like right. that oh. hard. I, I didn't even well, want to read a certain book of the Bible because it was his name. <laughs> I'm like, skip that one. <laughs> I'll tell you what helped me. Okay. I used to think that if I prayed for God to bless somebody, you know, he's going to give them all these nice new things mm-hmm. and promote them. And, you know, but that's not really 
when you pray for God to bless somebody who's in sin or who's done something wrong, probably the first thing he's going to try to bless them with is some truth and reality mm-hmm. yeah. about their own behavior. So we make a mistake when we think the Bible says, pray for them, really bless, and do not curse them. Mm-hmm. And that literally means pray for them, don't say evil things about them, but say good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with that, so, I'm praying, bless them really good, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I like Show them some really good oh, stuff. Oh, bless them, Lord. <laughs> but that, that, all the blessings. Really, I mean, you know, the... Praying for my dad all those years mm-hmm. finally brought him to the reality that what he had done was wrong. Yeah. And, uh, mm. you know, long story short, and everybody's heard it, he finally was saved as a result of, I'll never forget when he looked at Dave and he said, he said, Dave, most men in your position would have killed me. Mm-hmm. And all you ever did was show me love. Wow. wow. And That's so, a huge like, statement. what you did. In this last situation, <laughs> in a way, you did not that you're trying to do something to them, but you did more to them <laughs> than if you would have openly come against them because yeah. that kind of love, you can't argue with that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, what, what can you do with that? Yeah. There, you can't find any fault with that. Yeah. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, like, I, it, it immediately made me think of some of the things that I'd gone through. I think at the when we first, first, first started the the podcast, I would talk about my issue with my my father, mm-hmm. and that was before I even found out about the infidelity or anything, you know. And that was such a hard thing, you know, going through that forgiveness with my dad. And in that moment, it felt like the worst, hardest thing that I could have ever done. But forgiving my dad, even though my dad never really apologized. Like our relationship now in the in these past couple of years has just catapulted. You mm-hmm. know, it's nothing he's done. I literally just like, you know what? I'm tired of being mad at this man. Yeah. You know, no. like it's That's exhausting. I'm tired of being mad. <laughs> I, you know, I just don't. I'm too. I'm just too old and been around the mountain too many times <laughs> to just spend another day. I mean, anger is exhausting. It, it, it is. is. It's hard work. It is. To stay angry and to think all those negative thoughts and, yeah. you know, just be mad every time somebody you don't like gets yeah. blessed or mm-hmm. somebody likes somebody that you don't like. It's like just something that's really helped me is to realize God is only going to hold me accountable for me. Mm-hmm. He's not going to hold me accountable for what somebody else does. But when I stand before him, I'm only going to be held accountable for me and what I've done. Mm -hmm. So my job is to do the right thing by God's grace, with his help, no matter what anybody else does. And no, that's not easy, but it is easier than the other choice. Yeah. 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 It's so good to then, like what you said, is take ownership too of your role, right? In the in the situation, like yeah. I know I had a bad attitude with my dad sometimes. I know I wasn't the best wife, so it's like those things that doesn't justify what anybody else does, no. but it definitely shifts the perspective on like God, how can I grow from this situation? Mm-hmm. Right? How can I learn from this situation? So that ownership piece is very very vital in the healing and forgiveness process. It's like it you is, said yeah. before, heal, forgiving yourself too. Like, yeah. yeah, forgive myself for not necessarily being the best daughter all the time, Mm -hmm. not being the best wife all the time, not being the best friend all the time, you know, like God work on me so that I can learn from my mistakes. Unforgiveness is probably the single biggest problem that we have in the body of Christ. Mm. Oh, I believe that. It probably opens more doors for the enemy in people's lives than anything else because the Bible says in Ephesians 4, when you're angry, don't let the sun go down in your anger. Mm -hmm. So God never tells you not to ever get angry. Right. That's That's a... I'm so glad. That's a, well, it's a normal <laughs> human right, emotion. Right. Mm-hmm. But he says, when you're angry, do not sin. Mm, yeah. So you feel that anger, but how you handle it, <laughs> what you do with it, right. is the question. Yeah. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. Don't get the devil. Don't get the devil any such foothold in your life. So we actually do open a door and invite the devil into our life by staying mad. Well, that that needs to be said again, <laughs> seriously, because there are so many of us right now who are giving the devil that opportunity, and we don't even realize it. We don't even know. There yeah, are people what's wonder, happening. why am I having this problem? Why did this happen to me? Well, maybe, right. well, maybe you opened the door for the enemy mm. by not being Through obedient 
to God in forgiving somebody. You know, I, I prayed this morning. Mm. Hopefully thousands and thousands of people will hear this, see this, and forgive somebody. But even if one person mm. yeah. <laughs> will forgive somebody that they're hating or holding something against, the world that we live in today is sick. Yeah. And it's, it's in pain. This whole planet is like a ball of pain. And it's mostly over this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's people hating people because they're different than they are. They're hating people because of something that happened, you know, way back over here somewhere that nobody can do anything about now. The answer to so many of our problems is to forgive and to walk in love. Mm -hmm. This verse, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And it's so easy to brush over that. But when I, when we were studying for this, that tenderhearted word really struck me. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm really angry mm -hmm. and when I'm holding unforgiveness, my heart is hard, <laughs> yeah. you know, right. it becomes like a rock. And, it, you know, I, I can be really hard-headed. I, I told Aaron this I had to do something where somebody asked me to use three words to describe how to describe myself, and I asked my husband, and one of the words he threw out was "hard headed." <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute! <laughs> I can be hard headed, but I prefer like persistent or Absolutely. determined. Those that's are better right. words, but anyway. That, that's just a little side note for everyone. I'm not angry. I've forgiven You've him. him about yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> but I don't want my heart to be hard. Yeah. Right. Because it's really easy. They're kind of connected. My brain and my heart are kind of connected. And um, I, I think very logically. And, and when you think about something a lot, your heart goes with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be hard hearted. And I've seen, I've been so blessed all over the world to, to interview so many amazing people and see incredible stories of forgiveness. Right. I remember a story of a, a man whose brother was murdered, and he went to the prison and forgave the man who murdered his Ooh. brother. And they became good friends, and he <laughs> was an advocate for his release. And stories of child soldiers who the only reason they were able to get through what they got through was because at some point they had to forgive. And people who clawed their way out of mass graves who were left for dead, mm -hmm. who had to forgive the people that did that to them. I hear those things, and I think of what Jesus forgave. Mm -hmm. I think of Him saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the key. I they know not so what they do. I get so overwhelmed by that, because yeah. the, things that, the things that people are able to forgive is only through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it really is a gift when we, when we can do that for one another. And when I see your stories, and when I see what Christ was able to do and other people in the world, I know that I, I need to take that step to make the decisions mm -hmm. not to let my heart get hard, right. to treat each other with love. I, I, man, I would like to ask my question now. It rolls nicely into this. Please do. I've been yes. saving it up. I would know. love to hear it because <laughs> I'm sorry to say I'm waiting for I'm this curious. question. <laughs> so good. But I just know I'm not the only one who's going to have this kind of question. Um, Lots of our friends are going to want to know how you'd answer this. But Mike and I were talking recently. We've been through a year and had some stuff happen. And it and so we've gone through this process of forgiveness. And so it took a while. Like I, I couldn't get to it right away. Um, but we got to the point where I, I felt like I had forgiven him. But things will come up and I'll, I'll get triggered. And, and all the pain will come back. And... And I know it hurts him because he'll say, I thought, I thought you forgave me. I thought we've moved past this. And yes, my response is always, yes, I have. But also like there's pain that I now have to work through. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you can't forgive and forget, but how do you forgive and not keep going back to that pain? Or what is the, what's that look like? Well, you know, the word forget is kind of interesting. You know, mm -hmm. that in, in Isaiah it says, do not earnestly remember the past things. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it there's a difference in forgetting something and sitting around and thinking about it all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sure, I can bring back up, and to be honest, every once in a while, I'll find myself drifting off into thinking about some of the things my dad did to me. Yeah. 
and I'll start feeling upset, and and then I'm like, nope, hmm. not going there. So you can you can remember if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> you can choose not to, yeah. and so in a way, we can forget. Not that you could never bring it back up. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like don't earnestly remember. Don't just sit around and remember it and rehearse it. And that's why it's important not to just keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about mm-hmm. it. And yes, when you're hurt like you were, it's like having a bad fall. There's a bruise. Mm-hmm. There's a wound. Mm-hmm. There's a scab. You know, it's like healing sometimes hurts worse. You know, if you mm. if you fall and you you hurt yourself, it hurts, but then when that wound starts to form a scab, mm-hmm. it actually hurts even worse. Mm-hmm. So it does take some time to work through it, but that still doesn't mean that you haven't forgiven. Yeah. I think that's a really good point that, because I can, when this happened last week, when we had this conversation, I can remember at what point, whatever happened, it was, it was dumb. It was, it was a dumb thing. But I, in my mind, I flipped over to connect why that made me mad. And I could just feel myself like fueling my own anger and reacting in a way that was totally uncalled for. But I justified it as, well, I can be mad. Yeah. I forgive you, but I'm still mad. So <laughs> I, can, I can see how I could have made a different choice to stop thinking about that and just right. not go there. Yeah, one of the things that I've been praying intentionally since all the stuff that I've been dealing with was that, like, I can't wipe away the memory, you know, of what happened. And I can't exactly wipe away the fact that I felt the way I felt when it all, when I found all of it out and it kept happening, you know, and it's still happening. You know, like, the, the story doesn't just stop, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You have to learn how to live with that, you know. So I've been praying and asking God intentionally, God, Please take the the pain away from the memory. Let it, it like mm. let the memory just be a fact. Mm-hmm. It's a fact that it happened. But I I pray that the the pain that's affiliated with it leaves. Like that's one of the things yeah. that I've been intentionally praying. Like I can't help like when I see people in love on a on a movie. Like I can't help sure. when I see people talk about marriage. When I see people talk about you know have their family together. You know are things that I thought we were going to be like those things trigger me instantly, sure. and it, it instantly makes me go back to like like it's almost like it pulls me back <laughs> into where I was. And like mm-hmm. you said, Joyce, like you have to say like no, I like mm-hmm. yes, that's a fact, but I don't have to feel that pain. Like, and also remembering that if you let it, what happened to you, even though it was wrong, if you let it, God can use it to make you a better person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was really helpful to me when I realized, when I got to the point where I thought, you know, I said for years, if only I wouldn't have been abused. If only I wouldn't have been abused, thinking my life would be this or my life would be that. And I know I missed so much in childhood, I don't, I don't even know what I missed. You know, I don't, I don't know what it's like to have a father that you could go to and sit on their lap and ask for advice. I mean, I have, I, I'm just like totally lost when it comes to that. But I do know that uh, uh, when I finally, I came to the point one day, I thought, you know what, I can't even really say I'm sorry that it happened to me. Because I know that the fact that it did happen and that God walked me through it, it's made me who I am today. Mm-hmm. It, was, it wasn't God for it to happen, right. but you will turn out to be a better person than you would have been. If you let God use it for that purpose. Yeah. And I you help so many other people also. I mean, what you're sharing will help so many other people right. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Along the way. All those different stories, you know, of forgiveness that I've heard. I never heard anyone once ever say, I wish I would have held on to it a little bit longer. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wish I would have not forgiven. Yeah. And That's good. Ev- everyone is is moving forward because they forgave, right. not wishing they would have stayed mad longer. Yeah. And so you're right. God God will use this in, in all of our lives. What Whatever it is that we give to Him, He'll use in a positive way for our good, for His good, and for the good of others. Yeah. One verse I love that it's not about forgiveness in particular, but 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about what love is. And so I would going through that recently and thought it's patient and kind. And so to, to take whatever situation you're upset about and apply those words to it, 
I can't change their behavior, but that's how I need to respond. That does make you a better person. I mean, that, that does help you grow mm-hmm. to where God wants to take you when you're, that's your focus, not why you're so angry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great stuff. I, I mean, I really just think several people listening have maybe had something that's seeped into their spirit. Maybe you're thinking about forgiving. Maybe you're ready to make that choice. Maybe you've made it as we've been talking. I don't know. But I'm so grateful for all of you sharing oh, what, you. what you've been through and what God's doing. I always hate to hear somebody say, I'll never forgive you. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Every, anytime I hear that, I think, you know, don't, don't make that vow to yourself that you'll never forgive somebody because your, your life basically is on hold until you make the decision to forgive. So what do you think? I realize that right now your heart may be just a little bit tender. This is difficult stuff to do. It's difficult to talk about. But today, we want to continue to encourage you to forgive that person in your life who hurt you. We know that forgiveness is hard. It isn't easy. But there is freedom when you make the decision to let it go. That's why God tells us this stuff, because He knows what we need. He knows what's good for us, and He helps us to do it. All through the Bible, it tells us how. So we have a little booklet for you today that's absolutely free. It's from Joyce, and it's simply called Forgiveness. I love the beautiful flowers on here because it's kind of a sign of how it's really hard at the beginning and all of a sudden something beautiful starts to grow out of what you've been doing. You'll begin to see the wonderful results of the difficult work that you've put in. So you can get this book just like this in a physical little booklet or you can get it as a digital download, like I said, absolutely free. So just reach out, let us know that you'd like a little extra help. We are praying for you today that whatever it is in your life that's holding you back, that God will set you free and that you can forgive. It's time to finally forgive and be free. Joyce's booklet called Forgiveness will help you learn to let go of past hurts and move forward with life. You can trust God to make wrong things right, so quit holding a grudge and allow Him to work. This free resource is available today as a physical booklet or digital download. Visit online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-727-9673. Digital resources are stored on the Joyce Meyer app, so download it today. Need a girl's trip? Register now for the Love Life Women's Conference, September 22nd through 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. Come on, register now and join us. Watch episodes of Enjoying Everyday Life. Read daily devotionals. Follow a Bible study plan with the new Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Search Joyce Meyer in your app store and download the new Joyce Meyer Ministries app today. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org to share your prayer requests or partner with us in sharing Christ and loving people all across the globe. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.